Hi folks, and welcome back to Meaningful Money. Okay, I'm here on the uh, rocky beach at Newlin. Penzance is behind me. Not sure how much of that you can see. You can see the church on the horizon. <laughs> Difficult to see on a little screen. Uh, it's quite early in the morning, just after eight o'clock, which is why I've still got a coat on, despite the fact that it's August. Um, I'm going to continue talking about budgeting and uh, look at a sort of worked example. So hopefully that'll be helpful. I'm going to cut to a screencast in a minute. Uh, but before I get into that, my friends down here in the bottom right, that's Seven Investment Management, who continue to sponsor me, even after all this time, uh, over 18 months now here on Meaningful Money. I'm very grateful to them uh, for them sort of putting their logo on here and supporting what I'm doing. Thanks very much, guys. Okay, remember, you have to tell your money what to do or else it'll leave of its own accord. It's a sort of paraphrase from uh, my financial hero, Dave Ramsey. Um, you know, budgeting is not just important, it's essential to your future financial success. So, you know, we've got to get it right. So this is just a kind of fairly loose worked example Hopefully it'll be uh, helpful. But before I get into the screencast, worth just mentioning the best thing I ever did when it came to sort of sorting out just monthly finances, just making your own life easier, is to have two current accounts. So I have one uh, which all my direct debits go out of. So, you know, usual things, mortgage, insurances, uh, TV license, all that sort of thing, um, out of one account. And I get paid into that account. So the money comes in the top. I know how much is going out in the given month in sort of regular bills. So I leave that much in. And then what's left, I transfer to another current account. And then that current account is what we spend out of. So that's the one that we use, the switch card at the shop, things like that. Hope you can hear me over the sound of the waves. I'm not sure I thought this through. <laughs> so having two current accounts just makes life easier on yourself. So get paid into one, have all the bills paid out of one, and then what's left is your spending money. And that means that's the stuff that you've got to budget. Okay, so that's the sort of best tip I can give you, really. Um, but the next one is to pay yourself first. What do I mean by that? Well, this is where I'm going to cut to the screencast and explain it. So I'll see you back here in Newland in just a minute. Okay, here's a spreadsheet you could use to set your budget at the beginning of the month and then track it through the month. Everything starts with your net income up here in the top left. That's how much is coming into your bank account after you've paid your tax. Now you can see underneath that I've got a field called overspend last month. If you went over your budget last month, if you put the amount you went over in this field here, it will take it off your net income, meaning you have less to spend this month. It just is a powerful disincentive uh, away from going over your budget every month if you know you're going to have to make it up the following month. Then. Finally on the left we've got a couple of things just to remind you of uh, where you are with the amount of outstanding debt here on two credit cards, one small one and one large one. And then some savings account balances. These people are saving up for Christmas which is a good idea and they have their starter emergency fund in place which is the subject of the next video. Moving then on to pay yourself first, uh, this section here is our bills account. Remember I talked about having two current accounts. Well, this is the one where all your direct debits come out of. So those direct debits can be uh, of various different types. So firstly, we've got credit card payments. These people want to get rid of this debt. So let's put those credit card payments in. Then these people are also saving up, like I mentioned for Christmas, and they're saving an amount for annual bills. Let me just put those in. It's a good idea to pay for things that come once a year. It's a bit of a fallacy to uh, be surprised by Christmas, for example. It arrives at the same time every year, so you can plan for it. So you budget that in right at the top of the budget here, putting savings, putting money aside to pay for Christmas. And the same goes for annual bills. If you have a bill which comes in once a year, maybe a car insurance, something like that, that you're not paying by monthly direct debit, then you need to put an amount away for it every month, and you do that here. Then you've got the general household bills. Let me put those values in a minute. Okay, that's all the household bills in, and you can see that the total amount of direct debits that this couple uh, make are £1,077. Now what the spreadsheet does is it takes that figure off the net income and gives you a figure which you then have to budget. So we've paid yourself first in that you've put aside amounts for savings and you're paying off your credit cards. Then you are automatically paying your direct debits out and that means you only have to budget what's left which is over here in the next column. 
given that you've looked after all the fixed monthly bills, that means that you only have the day-to-day -day expenses that you need to budget, which is probably just a handful of categories. So you can see I've used some examples here, so I'll just fill in those figures a minute. Okay, these people are budgeting £500 for the month for food, £100 for fuel in their car, £200 worth of cash in their pocket, some money for a little bit of work they need doing on the house, um, and some money for some birthdays. And they've allowed themselves a £50 buffer just for small things which might come up that they haven't accounted for. And you can see from the bottom here that that's £925 out of a total available of 923 so they've actually gone over by £2, which, let's face it, is neither here nor there. So that's the budget for the month agreed between them. So now what they do is uh, track it on a week-by-week -week basis, which is the next column on the sheet. Okay, at the end of week one, uh, this, these people put in what they've spent on food and fuel and cash out of the bank, etc. And they put it in the week one column here. Note that I've put a note above that one of these weeks will be long because, as we all know, months are not divided equally into four weeks. But it's only a guide, so it gives them an idea of how much they've spent in that first week against their budget. And over here in the final column, you can see that uh, it adds up what they've uh, spent. Of course, this is only one week worth. The variance here, the next column, is how much they still have left to spend on that budget line. And then this uh, column here, oh, I can see that I've just missed the formula here up in this top cell, tells them how far through the month they are, or how th far through the budget they are that month. So after one week out of four, you would expect them to be 25% through their budget. So you can see that here, they're ahead. Here, they're bang on target of 25%. So this weekly review will help you to keep track of your budget, make sure you're on target, tell you if you need to trim back in any other areas for the rest of the month, um, and just generally help you uh, do a good job of budgeting. Okay, I hope that was uh, helpful. The spreadsheet that I was using there, I've made available sort of a blank version. It's an Excel format, so you'll need that to be able to run it. Alternatively, I've got a PDF, so you can print it out and fill it in by hand. Um, Worth just mentioning YNAB, that's You Need a Budget. If you go to the homepage of MeaningfulMoney.tv, look on the right-hand side, there's a link to You Need a Budget. It's my chosen software tool when it comes to budgeting. It's brilliant at reporting, really quick and easy to use, and there's a whole sort of system of budgeting behind it, which uh, I really recommend. It's great. So have a look at that. Leave any questions, as ever. Uh, if this has raised any questions, just fire them at me at Pete at MeaningfulMoney.tv, or even better, just leave a comment under the video here and I'll do my very best to answer it as soon as I can. Thanks for watching this one. Next time we're going to talk about building an emergency fund, so I'll see you next time.